Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. Today I'm continuing my series where I look at how movie adaptations change book characters and then I draw them based on their text descriptions. Today we're doing Twilight, one of the most divisive books of my childhood, and we're going to see how accurate that movie adaptation was. When Robert Pattinson was cast as Edward, it was actually my first time seeing fan backlash. There were people threatening to boycott the movie, there was a hashtag that just said not my Edward. They interviewed people um, who were like angry about the casting, which uh, even at the time I thought was really crazy. But um, basically a lot of the hardcore fans weren't happy with the casting and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that in general Edward is just described as like perfectly handsome, like the most beautiful handsome person ever. And I do think that's kind of an unfair standard to put any actor to. Um, but anyway, <laughs> there's a few different places where we can get some pretty specific descriptions of him that aren't just sort of generic like that he's beautiful or handsome or whatever. One of the first solid descriptions we get of him um, is in comparison to his brother when Bella says, The last was lanky, less bulky, with untidy, bronze-colored hair. He was more boyish than the others. Um, so that's on page 25, pretty early in the story. She doesn't even know his name yet. Um, so basically, we got a few helpful hints about what he looks like. Um, in comparison to his muscular brother, he is less so. Um, so he's more like long and slender. Um, lanky usually implies like tall and skinny. And his hair color being bronze gets mentioned quite a bit throughout this story, so that's a really important detail. And his hair, I would say, is one of the least accurate parts of his movie description. Um, when I see him in the movie, oftentimes it looks like his hair is just sort of brown, like a regular brown color, whereas like bronze implies a lot more of like a reddish, um, maybe like a dark reddish brown kind of color. Um, so that was something that they decided not to go with. As well as describing it as untidy, I didn't really know how to take that necessarily. I wasn't sure if his hair should be up or down with like bangs in his face. I opted for hair down since he's specifically described as more boyish and I feel like it made him look more boyish and um, not as old. As for his face, we have a few different clues. On page 26, um, all of the vampires are described as having perfect angular straight features. Um, so basically we're looking for something very chiseled with very little asymmetry. I used an outfit described on page 208 for him, which is a light beige leather jacket with a ivory turtleneck sweater underneath. Now Edward has two different modes, um, one which I will call his hangry mode because it's when his eyes are black and he's really hungry for blood, and then there's his special anime eyes mode where he has basically eyes the color of butterscotch. Um, so the uh, more full body shot of him I decided to do as her first impression of him when he's really hungry. Um, there's a part on page 60 where she says, I vividly remember the flat black color of his eyes the last time he glared at me. Today his eyes were a completely different color, a strange ochre, darker than butterscotch, but the same golden tone. Um, so his eyes kind of oscillate between those two colors and even get as light as honey at certain points, uh, so I wanted to feature both. So comparing the movie version to my version, I actually have complaints about both. <laughs> I think they made his hair not copper enough, and I think I made his hair a little too copper, a little too orangey, and a little too light. I honestly think the primary reason there was a whole like hashtag around Edward not being cast well was just because a lot of fans were a little bit too wrapped up in how they personally pictured Edward in their head when they read the book. Ironically, I do think he looks a little bit too old, even though Edward is canonically like over 100 years old. I think if he had been the same age he was when he was playing Cedric Diggory in the Harry Potter series, we might have had a more accurate feeling high schooler representation from this vampire. And lastly, I suspect a lot of the reason why people thought he was a miscast was just because it does seem like this actor has more of like a rugged good look kind of face rather than this like perfect, very like pretty um, and almost like photoshopped kind of face that's described in the book. Next up is Bella, and in contrast to Edward, I don't remember there being really any fanfare about the casting of her. I think everyone who was really obsessed with this series at the time just wanted to be here and didn't really care what actress was portraying her in the movie. Um, so uh, honestly, I just remember Bella getting criticized for her personality in the book and the movie. There was a lot of critique of Twilight as soon as the movie came out. I remember there was a very sudden shift from like the people who had read the book and were like, oh yeah, it's pretty good. And then when the movie came out, everyone was like, this is 
extremely damaging and bad. Bella's a bad role model and she's like very passive and dumb um, and people really love to hate on it. Um, I still remember that time in internet history very, very clearly. Um, so basically Bella is described um, in a pretty roundabout way. Um, often she's just sort of like tr describing herself with positive features but saying it in a negative way. Um, so like she describes herself as not like an Arizona girl, um, she's not like tan and athletic like she's supposed to be, even though they mentioned that she's definitely very slender, she also looks soft like not an athlete. Um, she's described with straight long brown hair, dark brown, um, and she often uses it to hide her face when Edward catches her staring at him. Um, so it's at least long enough to completely cover her face. I would assume it's down to around her shoulder blades and that is about how long it is in the movie as well. Um, as for her face, she's supposed to have a heart-shaped face with a widow's peak. I like that she has a widow's peak because it kind of reminds me of like the Bella Lugosi classic vampire stuff. Um, I think that's a funny detail. She also is described as having very big eyes and they're sort of wide set on her face and a straight nose. Some people have criticized Stephanie Myers for the fact that she looks kind of similar to the description of Bella. I don't know how fair that is, honestly. I think rather than calling her a self-insert of the author, it kind of seems like she was more designed just to be an insert for anyone who's reading it. Obviously, um, bookworm young girls are probably the most easily able to insert themselves into the story, which I think is by design. I mean, I think any sort of wish fulfillment story um, for young people <laughs> kind of follows in this um, trope, and I think that's why main characters are often boring. Um, honestly, I've read a lot of books and and while I can totally agree that Bella does not have a lot of flavor on her own, that's also true of a lot of other really uh, well-respected books and novels. And um, honestly, it's it's interesting to see a character get so universally panned for this when I feel like it's very common for main characters to have very little sort of like internal life. Usually they're just reacting to situations in a way that's very understandable so that the reader can put themselves in their shoes. But that's a rant for another time. Honestly, I think Bella was cast pretty well. The only thing, if I was to nitpick at all, is I feel like Bella is described as being a little more like soft and doll-like rather than this very like sharp, gorgeous person that Kristen Stewart is. Um, but honestly, I think that they did pretty much as well as they could. Um, the only thing that they really changed was that they made Bella's hair styled sort of curly wavy rather than perfectly straight um, as it is in the book. Everything else seems to be mostly the same. Next up is, of course, Jacob. Now, um, even those of you who are not very familiar with Twilight are probably familiar with the Team Edward versus Team Jacob whole ideology. So it might surprise some of you if you haven't read the book that in the first book of Twilight, Jacob is neither a werewolf nor really a love interest. Bella doesn't take him very seriously because he's only 15 and he hasn't got all bulked up on werewolf juice. When she meets him, she describes him like this. He looked 14, maybe 15, and had long, glossy black hair pulled back with a rubber band at the nape of his neck. His skin was beautiful, silky, and russet colored. His eyes were dark, set deep above the high planes of his cheekbones. He still had just a hint of childish roundness left around his chin. Altogether, a very pretty face. So basically, in the first book, he is mainly there to just tell Bella about the stories of the vampire so she can sort of put it together and then approach Edward about whether or not he is indeed a vampire. Um, she also meets him by the ocean, um, they're on the beach, so I decided to give his hair just a touch of that like waviness of ocean air. I just felt like it would make it feel more accurate to the scene, if that makes any sense. He's basically supposed to be the foil to Edward, so he's less intimidating, he's more like gregarious, open, sort of warm um, with Bella, and I really wanted to make sure that his personality shone through. Um, overall, I feel like Taylor Lautner was an excellent pick. Um, obviously, he will be Shark Boy forever, um, but he did a pretty good job as Jacob, though I do feel like sometimes the rapport between him and Bella came off a little bit awkward, though I'm not sure if that was like more of a script 
issue. Um, but upon reading the segment, it's very clear that like Jacob is supposed to be a really like smiley, happy, um, outgoing type of person, which um, is in direct contrast to how withdrawn and um, sort of intimidating Edward is all the time. Um, I decided to give him like a pretty um, sort of upturned eye. I just wanted him to look happy and smiley and cute. Um, and I generally just wanted to make him look appropriately young since she misidentifies him as 14 at first glance. He has to look pretty young. Um, so I kind of tried to focus on his youth because I feel like that is one element where maybe in the movie it was like less accurate feeling. I mean, generally in movies, all the characters seem a little bit older than they should be. Um, I think just out of the like difficulty of getting a movie done um, with really young actors before they start to look older um, so yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing that didn't really match. Honestly, based on this description, they did a shockingly good job in their casting. Um, I can't really picture any actor who would suit the role better than this that I'm familiar with. Um, and yeah, I generally think he turned out really cute. I actually quite like this drawing of him. So here's the whole squad all together, um, based on the book descriptions as best as I could draw them. Honestly, I'm not 100% sold on my own drawings of them, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching me um, basically design the characters based solely on the text descriptions. Let me know what you thought of Twilight. Were you a Twilight fan back in the day, or were you one of the avid haters of Twilight? Um, I find it's one of the most divisive stories out there. Me personally, I don't really care at this point. Like, I'm so far outside of the um, intended audience, and it was so long ago that I read it that it's really hard for me to even say. Um, but whether you like it or hate it, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you to all of my patrons, including Bald Headed Potato, Bella Story, Best Kaiju, Braggy, Calvin Pong, Lion. Don't Eat Soap, Dr. Casket, Alaria Louis, Eric G, Greer the Animator, Griffix, Hachiyubi, Ice Cream Pal, Ivan Rodriguez, JJJ, Joseph Copel, LeBlobloblem, Le Marina Costa, Mr. Dr. Pence, Nicole Ludwak, Le Nicola Queen, Nora Cornelson, Ruin Wayne Crow, Some Mediocre Artists, The RC Moose, Throat Foam, XAM, and Your Boy ST.